There are a few key navigational elements that I like to have in every single app that I build. And I'm going to talk through how I think about them, how I design them, and how I maintain them in the code base. So this is a new Ruby on Rails project that I just spun up. I've also installed the uh, Rails 8 authentication system uh, using the Rails 8 generator for that. I have a video all about that. And I've installed uh, instrumental components with the instrumental authentication upgrade that gives us these views for sign in and sign up and also the user profile and everything. I've also installed some instrumental layouts and the navigational elements that come packaged with instrumental components. You can learn more about that at instrumental.dev, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and walk through all the elements here. First thing is I'm viewing the home page. This is the root level page. You know, not much content here. This is just a demo. Of course, one navigational element that I want to focus on at this stage where the user is completely logged out and they're just viewing the root page is I have this uh, simple navigation up here, sign in and sign up. Now, this is an area where every app might be a little bit different. Your homepage might not actually be the marketing site. It might actually just be the login page. But in this case, we're assuming that you have some sort of like static informational page at the root level for users who are not yet logged in, maybe like a landing page or, or a marketing site. So I have this sign in and sign up link here. But if I was logged in, that's going to turn into the user menu. And I'm going to show you that in just a minute. So let's go ahead and sign up for an account. So this is the registration flow that has been added to the Rails 8 authentication, um, which we've added using the instrumental gem. So I'm going to sign up for a new account. Okay, so now I've just registered for a new account and it logged me in and I landed here on my dashboard view. So here we see a different layout and some more navigational elements. The navigational elements that I'm going to focus on in this video are the primary navigation here, the user navigation up here, and the breadcrumbs navigation, which is seen here. Before we get much further, though, this layout is fine. It's nice and clean, but it's a little bit too minimal. I want something with uh, more just spruce up the layout just a little bit. So I'm going to actually run one of the layout generators from instrumental components. So I'm going to do Rails uh, G instrumental layout, and we're going to switch it to the collapsible sidebar. Let's install that. And you, you can have um, full documentation and instructions on actually how to use this stuff at instrumental.dev. I'm just going to sort of like run through it for the sake of this demo kind of quickly. So um, the one thing that just changed here is the left side now has um, a little bit of a, a different color. And now we have this collapsible version of the navigation. So that's kind of cool. The, the other cool thing about this is that it'll actually remember that I've left it in this state. So if I refresh the page, you know, it'll sort of remember that I left it in the collapsed state um, or I can, you know, take it out like that. Now let's focus in on this primary navigation here. So the first thing that you'll notice is that we have four top level links and one of them, this link three has a couple of sub navigational links here. So that's a really common pattern that I happen to run into in a lot of the apps that I work on. You know, we usually have a couple of like main sections of the app. These are like the main features or main areas that a user can go to operate the thing that the app does. Right. And I want to be very selective about what I actually put into this nav, this like top level primary navigation. We don't want to put everything like, you know, I don't, I usually don't put like links to settings or user profile or change your password or, you know, or like a contact us page or support, all that kind of stuff does not go in the primary navigation. This is more about the user taking action on their job to be done in the application. Um, this is just a demo, but for example, and I don't always have like a dashboard view, but, um, in this case, there's a dashboard. This might be, let's say it's a CRM app. This might be your contacts view. Um, and this might be, uh, your deals view or something like that. Anyway, top level navigations go here. I do usually like to have an icon attached to each of them. The icons library that I use on all of my projects is font. Awesome. Huge selection. It's, it's really great. Um, so I can swap in different icons and, uh, and names for those. Um, the icons also are handy when I have this collapsible sidebar view where, um, you know, the icon is, is the only thing that's shown, but then on hover we show the uh, the title for the link there. Now, sub-navigational links really only come into play on certain sections of an app if they come into play at all. Um, but, you know, sometimes uh, there is a section where I want to show 
um, a couple of additional pages that are you know still related to this uh, section of the application. The other thing that you'll notice that I think is pretty important is to show the user where they are in the app you know, the active state. So for example, if I'm on the dashboard, you'll notice that the dashboard link is highlighted. If I'm on the page that's called link two, then that page is highlighted. And then in this section three, which has some sub links, let's say I'm on like the page called three B that link is highlighted and the parent section is all highlighted. So I think that's another really important um, kind of user experience thing to just make sure that the user is oriented. The thing about navigations it's not only about helping the user click to go to a place. I think it's even more important to let the user know where they currently are and maybe where they came from and, ha and, and orient them. And that's, that's how this, this active state really helps. Now, of course, the main navigation also needs to be, um, available on mobile. So if we shrink this down to a mobile view, you know, our layouts always accommodate that. So we have a, um, a mobile menu that opens up there with a simple X icon that, that, that can get us out of it. But as you can see, the primary navigation is available here along with the sub navigational links, um, in, in the primary nav here. And, you know, while I'm on the subject of that, let's actually open up the code base and take a look at, at where this is managed in all of the layouts that come with instrumental components. We give you this, uh, partial called primary nav. And what I like about this is that in this primary nav file, we define the entire primary navigation and its sub navigational links all in one place. So this whole block here is what actually defines this whole, uh, set of links. So we have individual partials and links for these top level, uh, navigational items. And, and then we use this array of hashes to build out the, uh, the sub navigational links. Now. It's important that this is all in one place in one uh, part of the code base, because also when we go down to mobile, the mobile menu also pulls in that same primary nav partial, which means, you know, we don't need to maintain and update our links in two different places in our code base on across both desktop and mobile. Um, you know, we do see that a lot in, in a lot of like components libraries out there where they they'll just sort of like mark up. Cause it's easier from a front end standpoint to, to mark up links a little bit differently in the, in the, uh, mobile navigation versus the, um, versus the, the desktop version. And we have different styling for that as well. Uh, but using Ruby on rails and using partials, we can make sure that our navigation is contained in a single partial, and then we can pull it into two different places like that. So that's, that's really important. And we do a, a similar thing with the, uh, with the user navigation. Another thing that you'll see here is we have this method called active nav link, and that's actually a, uh, a, like a dynamic, um, method, which has a bunch of logic in here in it to not only check if the current page is being viewed and then we'll mark it as active, but also if you are in one of the sub links, then we are also using that, uh, that logic to make sure that the entire section is highlighted in addition to the individual link that is, uh, th that's active. So all of that is just built right into the primary navigation. In essence, any app that I ever work on, all I really need to do is, is edit these individual link paths and the names and, and maybe the icon class that I want to use on, on each one. Um, and then I can, uh, sort of swap these out now, of course, with cursor and, and like, uh, you know, Claude and, and chat GPT, um, the nice thing is that it can start to catch on to these design patterns that we've built in to our components and our navigational structures that I can just tell Claude or tell cursor to, you know, build out three more pages and add them into the navigation and it'll just, um, pick it up very nicely. Now you might be wondering about the colors and the styling, all of that, of course, is always customizable. Uh, you can, you can customize that all right within the, uh, the partials itself. This is where we have access to all the detailed tail and CSS classes that get applied, um, in all the different states from like inactive state to active state to, uh, to like sub links, all that stuff is sort of defined in here and you can leave this alone and not even touch it. And it sort of just has this clean look and you can maybe just swap out your colors in the, in the theme settings. Um, but, um, or you can, you know, really get granular and start to customize your app. That's one of the key, uh, design principles behind instrumental components. Okay. So I think that's enough to talk about on the primary navigation. Now let's talk about this 
uh, piece, which I call the user menu. I'm here logged in as demo user. And by default, it'll, it'll show my email address. But if I have edited my profile, now this user profile page and all the logic and the form that goes into this, this is all built into our instrumental authentication component. And I have another entire video all about that. But if I were to change my name to demo user, and if I uh, added a, a photo, uh, like a photo to my avatar, I'm not going to do that right now. Um, it will actually display here using my full name instead of my email address. So that's kind of nice. I'll just sort of go back to uh, the dashboard for now. This user menu is where I tend to put a couple of sort of like essential links, not like use case, not like job to be done links, which go in the primary navigation, but these are more like utility links, like getting to my profile. And then once I'm in here, I can use this sub navigation. I'll talk about that in a minute um, to get to like my edit uh, password view, but also like signing out, um, I'll, I'll put in there. And then later when I add in accounts and, and team member invites and, and like ac account specific settings, again, we have another whole component about that and a video coming about that. I'll probably put like an account settings link in here as well. Maybe like an account switching capability would, would go into this, uh, navigation. Another thing that I might put into this, uh, dropdown navigation at some point would be, um, like a link to customer support or a link to get help. Um, sometimes we have like a little widget in the bottom corner. That's also useful. I think there's nothing wrong with having it in, in two different places, but I'm going to actually go ahead and sign out and let's go back to the root level page and let's come back to, um, to this homepage. Now, uh, we've seen this already. This is the home page. I'm logged out. And in this logged out state, I'm showing the sign in and sign up. Um, but let's go back and sign in again. Okay. So I'm signed in again, but let's say I navigate to that home page again. In, in this particular case, we're assuming that there is a marketing site and it is still visible to logged in users. So in this case, I'm viewing that home page, that marketing site, but instead of seeing the sign in and sign up button, the application recognizes that I am already signed in and I have my user links right here at the top of the site. So, you know, this might be like an informational marketing page, but it does have this, a little bit of smart capability to know that I am logged in and I could just come right back into the application like that. Um, sometimes I design this a little bit differently. Like instead of this, I might just have a button that says go to dashboard. Um, but I, I kind of like this cause it, it gives me all of my, um, you know, options right here. Now in other applications, you might not even make the, the homepage or the marketing page even visible to logged in users. Um, in that case, you might want to like redirect users to the dashboard view when they are, uh, logged in. Let's go back to that user profile for a minute. And you know, the other thing that you might've noticed is another navigational element. This is what I call a sub nav. It's a little bit different than these sub links. So in terms of importance, we have like the top level, most important navigational items in the primary top level. Some of these sections have additional sub links here, but then there are other areas of the site. Like for example, when I'm editing the user profile where, where, where we have a couple of different pages, um, that are all sort of related to each other. So we have this edit profile view, but then in a separate page, we have edit password. Um, so this goes into this sub navigational element. This is another component that's built into, uh, instrumental. It is sort of tied into the content of the page and it's highly related to the, to the content that I'm looking at. Um, this one, when I go down to mobile, you'll see that that sub navigation actually automatically converts into a sort of like a drop down menu when we're on a mobile device, we come back out, we expand out to to this. So I don't always use these, but, um, you know, these are nice to be like section specific navigations once I'm in here. All right. So the last piece is the breadcrumbs navigation. This is also a really important navigational element. Um, so at the top level, all these links usually just show the title of the page in, in the, uh, in the breadcrumb. Um, but if I'm on a sub page, then we'll have like the parent page followed by the sub page. And sometimes we go like a third and fourth level um, so all of that is, is handled again, it helps with orienting the user, but it, it's also a way for the user to navigate in, into and out of, or go deeper and go back up to the surface, if you will, um, using the, these like breadcrumb navigational links. I, I think that's really important. Let's just take a quick look at, um, 
at some of the code behind this stuff. Actually, I, I realized that I didn't show the code for the user menu. So every uh, instrumental layout comes with this user menu partial. And here's a look at that. So, you know, if the user is currently logged in, then we're going to, um, and actually instead of this, I, I could have even made it authenticated. That's probably a little bit better. This will this will hook into uh, Rails 8 authentication system, which checks if the user is currently authenticated. Um, again, we're going to show the, uh, the user's name and the user's menu. So that's using our dropdown component, which is part of uh, instrumental, um, that has like the, my profile and the sign out link. But in the case where the user is not authenticated, then we have another dedicated partial called unauthenticated links. And that looks like this. And that's where we show the sign in and sign up button. So that is for this piece up here. Now let's take a look at the breadcrumbs. Let's take a look at like three B. Um, so this is the breadcrumbs component. Uh, it's, it's sort of like a yield. It, it uses this content for block, which, uh, yields this into the application view or application layout, um, right in, into this spot. And then we have these components for displaying breadcrumbs. So starting with the top level component, and this one has a link, so that's, that's this one. Then we have this divider element followed by just an informational, um, piece of text here that shows the, uh, the current page title. So pretty simple, very customizable. We can, you know, customize exactly what text we want to put in here. These breadcrumb links have other options built into them. And yeah, so I think those are the main navigational elements that I use in most of the applications that I work on. Um, one other thing that I didn't quite talk about is, um, like a footer navigation. Usually that doesn't come into play in applications that I work on, but it does come into play in marketing websites that I design. In this case, I didn't include it, but you know, on a marketing site, I might have like a footer down here, which has some, some navigational elements as well. Maybe I'll cover that in a different video. So that's a look at how I use navigations in all of my applications. As I mentioned, we talked a lot about signing in and signing up and registering and these flows built into Rails 8 with Rails 8 authentication. I have another entire video all about how I design and implement these authentication flows along with the user profile system and the avatar system and everything related to the user. All of that is in my video on upgrading your Rails 8 authentication. I invite you to check that out right now. Thanks for watching. See ya.